Well, we're here at the John Steinbeck Library, and that's June 25th, 2014. And we're going to have a conversation with Bunny Stevens, is that correct? Yes, it is. And of course, my name when I was growing up in Salinas was Bunny Amba. And that was a rather unusual name, so I'll spell it. U-M-B-A-U-G-H. That's my maiden name. I haven't heard that one before. So you were telling me that you were born in Modesto? You know, Mary Jean, I was born in Modesto in 1941. And when I was in third grade, my mother moved us to Salinas. But the first five or, five or six years of my life, I lived in Modesto. Was, it must have been hard to leave your family in Modesto and come to Salinas. You know, that's an interesting little story in itself, Mary Jane, because while we lived in Modesto, we lived with my Aunt Dolores, Dolores Bell, and she had eight children of her own. She was a widow. My ma mother was her younger sister, and so when my father was out of our life, my Aunt Dolores took in her younger sister, Pauline Umbaugh, and her three children, being my two brothers and me, and we loved living with my Aunt Dolores. With, she nurtured the 11 of us in an old frame house on F Street in Modesto, and there was constant activity and chaos, and my Aunt Dolores just kind of tranquilly there in the middle of it, and it seemed like life came out of her in all directions, and she had love for all of us. Didn't matter who was her child and who was her niece or nephew. Um, my Aunt Dolores, when I was little, I couldn't say her name, so I had a love name for her, Lors. And so my brothers and uh, I, we, we always called her Lors. And I can remember the one little thing I'd like to say about my Aunt Dolores is this was just coming out of the Depression. It was during World War II. Things were very unsure and chaotic. And she, I remember the blackout curtains that we had in the house that we had to close at night. And my Aunt Dolores, my Loris, was a warden for the block that we were on. She had to go make sure everybody's curtains were, and no light was showing. And yet, in spite of all, and she was a widow with eight children. In spite of all that, I remember transients would come to the back door of our house and the folk wisdom of the time said there was a mark that they put on a house if there was a generous person there. Well, if that's true, there was a big mark on my Aunt Dolores because they would knock on the back door and she would go to the door and there would be maybe two transients, two men standing there and she would go to the cupboard, which Denver had a lot, and she, would, she kept cans of Campbell's soup in the cupboard for just that purpose. She would open a can of soup, hand it to one, open a can of soup, and hand it to the other. And they would go on their way with this, you know, holding this can of soup, and she'd just turn away from it, never thinking she'd done anything remarkable. But that's the kind of person she was. Throughout her life, people in Modesto made a parade to her doorstep, not asking for handouts <laughs> by that time, but just because she was that kind of an, I, I think of her as an earth mother, mother to everybody. She raised her own, and then other teenagers that would come, and they would be on hard times, and she'd take them in, however long it took for them to get on their feet. Remarkable woman. So yes, when my mom uh, brought my brothers and me to Salinas, it was tough leaving that kind of an environment. Why did she come to Salinas? Well, that's a little story too in and of itself. Um, my dad was, was a scary presence in Modesto. He would come at night and surprise my mom wherever we were living at the time. And so she moved, brought us to Salinas to get away from her ex-husband who was still in, imposing himself on her. And um, when we moved to Salinas, we moved in with my 
father's sister and her husband. Um, my uncle Harry taught at Hartnell College. He taught English at Hartnell College. And my Aunt Tony was, uh, she worked at the pub. I mean, that pu the pub has been here for a long time. She was a hostess at the pub restaurant. So my Aunt Tony and Uncle Harry were uh, welcoming to us when we first moved to Salinas. And we lived right here near where I am as we speak. We're here at the Steinbeck Library. And when we moved to Salinas, we moved in with my Aunt Tony and Uncle Harry about a block from where we're sitting. It's now an architectural firm, but that little house at the corner of West San Luis uh, was where I lived. Went to school at Roosevelt School, just a few blocks from here. And one of my main contacts during my childhood was the Salinas Public Library was then at another corner of, of San Luis Street in Maine. And so those were the places that I hung out, the library, because I could walk there, and the school. And then my Aunt Tony and Uncle Harry were very good to us, too. Well, you had some wonderful things to say about what the library meant to you when you would go there. It was one thing that is going to come out one way or the other, Mary Jane, is my mom was not nurturing. My brothers and I had experiences with nurturing um, mother substitutes, uh, my Aunt Dolores being a prime one, and then my Aunt Tony to some degree. But my mother was non-nurturing. She was a very difficult person. She was, in fact, she was violent with my brothers and with me. And so the library was an escape for me. There were very few things that my mother would allow us to do my brothers, I don't remember them, either one, getting a library card, but boy, that was solid gold to me in those days. And the library was one of the places I could go. And so I would go there, and I'd get all choked up when I think about reading Little Women. Oh. What a beautiful story, and it's a story about sisters and family life, and they had the mother I wanted, darn it! <laughs> I mean, and so, I, but that, book was introduced to me by, I don't remember, it seems like there was a male librarian. I don't remember all that well who was there, but I do remember the stacks, you know, wandering around, and whoever was there would recommend a book, and I remember uh, reading Little Women. Once I opened it, I, I took it home with me, checked it out, and took it home with me, and I think at that time you could check out three books. But I don't think I ever did that because going back and forth was part of the fun. So I took that book home and I read it, I started reading it, and I read all night. And I sat in a chair, and at that time we were living on Church Street, right here in the same area of Salinas. A habit that my mom had, and we'll get back to that, but a habit she had was moving us from rent house to rent house to rent house. So my brothers and I, we never went to the same school a whole school year. She just moved us constantly. We were constantly in a state of, of fl in turmoil. We never knew. In fact, one of my worst f fears was that I would get out of school and not know how to, to I wouldn't know where home was because we moved so often. But, so the library was kind of like an anchor. And I could go there, and uh, getting back to Little Women, I was reading it in the house we lived in here on Church Street, and I sat in an old wing chair in the dining room, and I just cried my heart out. That book was so, it so impa it pa impacted me. So it, I remember it having, and an, it's it, even to the extent, I get a little tongue-tied here, Joe was a writer, and I did that. I wrote, and I had teachers that encouraged that. It, when you're moved constantly, there are subjects that you lose. Um, I remember one time sitting in Alisal Elementary School. My mom had moved us, in that case, out to the Alisal District. And I was sitting at my desk trying to figure out what was going on, and the teacher was very irate with me because it was a social studies book. And I should know what was going on, but I had no clue. It was a different book. 
than what the previous school had used. Math, I was never sure of myself in math. But reading and writing came easily. And so I could, I, when we would move from one school to another, back then they had these euphemistic terms for the reading groups and perhaps, you know, but you always knew that the robins were the good reading group. So I would start out in the blackbirds or the bluebirds or something. But I always very quickly was in the top reading group and remember that being such a pleasure to me that I was able to read and, you know, spin off of that as writing. And so writing became a pastime of mine too. So there were a lot of things in Little Women. Number one, I wanted their mom and the happy home life that they had in spite of the tough times that they were in. And then I identified with Jo. She was very independent. I'm not sure I was independent. We had to be to some extent because my mom never was a, a helper in our lives. Um, we had to make our own way a lot. But Jo wrote and she found an escape in reading and writing. So I felt very, very close to her. You seem to have had a really good experience with schools. And were there any particular teachers you remember or, or highlights in the Okay. <laughs> you know, when I went to Lincoln School, that, uh, that was a good year. I think I was there the whole of my fifth grade. And Miss Kitts was the name of the teacher. And there were a group of us, eventually, we, even though I, my mom moved us and I lost touch with those kids that I went to fifth grade with, but since it was only one high school in Salinas at that time, there was a reunion eventually. I met those kids again. So she was a, a teacher who was very, she saw me, she saw me as being smart, and she was, um, she was one of the teachers I remember. And Lincoln School with the, big courtyard in the middle was um, a very, it was a, it was a home, it was felt like home to me. Whereas my home might not feel very sheltering. I, I found that shelter within the school system. And when I went to, um, it was junior high school then, not middle school, and we were living in the Alisal district. And so the first day, of school at El Sasal Junior High. There was no transition then, you know, you just walked to a different school the first day of school. But I remember my first day at El Sasal, and my first period was math, a subject that I hadn't been all that confident in. And the teacher's name was Mr. Freilicker, and he put a problem on the board. And here we are all sitting there expectantly, our first day in junior high school. And he turned around and he said to the class, who can solve that problem? And I put my hand up and I looked around me, nobody else's hand was up. And he said, how would you solve that? And I have no clue now what it was about, but I answered him and he said, you're very bright. Nobody, I, couldn't, I could not remember anybody ever saying that to me. And thus started my three year tenure at El Sasal Junior High School which was, uh, it made a huge difference in who I was and what I uh, thought of myself. I, I realized it wasn't just Mr. Freilicker, it was a lot of wonderful, Miss Jones was my English teacher and she, my older brother, his name's David Umba, but I always called him Buzz. Uh, Buzz had been in Miss Jones class before so when she saw me she said, oh, your brother was a, is a naturally gifted writer. I bet you are too. So when you have people in authority and they say those kinds of things to you and you've never received that at home, wow. And thus begun, and I could, uh, Mr. Clark was my social studies teacher and he was another wonderful man who taught in a way that I had never experienced before where you enter into the story. It's not just something that you learn by rote. Um, Miss Bueller, my counselor, we called them counselors back then, not coordinators. My counselor at El Sasal Junior High School, when my mom 
packed the boxes and was going to move us again and I, I was heartbroken. For the first time in my life, I had been in a, a truly um, positive experience with lots of different teachers that were nurturing and, and, and hopeful. They, every day when, because I was so deprived of home, every day that I went to school was full of hope. Something good was going to happen here. Didn't happen at home, but here it would happen. And so my mom, get choked up here, my mom said, okay, you got to check out of school today, we're moving. And we're moving, you'll have to go to Washington Junior High. It was the only other uh, high, junior high in Salinas at the time. And so when I went to the office that day, and whoever was working at the counter said, I told him I have to talk to my counselor, I, I have to leave to check out of school. And so Ms. Bueller came and she said, Bunny, come into my office for a minute. And she was this little short round dumpling of a woman. She was just, and every pore in her body, you could tell, she was just love personified. So she invited me into her office and she very gently closed the door and she said, so you're, you're leaving us? And I said, yes, my mom, we're moving to the other school district. And so my mom told me I have to check out of school today. And she looked at me with love and she said, if you can figure out a way to get here, we won't make you transfer. I learned to ride this, the, city school, the city bus system and that was the way my brothers and I got around if we had to go somewhere. And you know, my mom never took us. If we needed to go someplace or wanted to go someplace, we rode the bus. So I was familiar with it and it cost a nickel and somehow or other. And if I didn't have the nickel, I always had, you know, the bus driver became a friend. And I remember times when I didn't have the nickel, he didn't make me get off the bus. And so I was at home at Elsa South Junior High for three years, seventh, eighth, and ninth grades at, at that time. And I knew, no matter where else we went in Salinas, that was home. They never made me transfer. I, you know, I remember the graduation from ninth grade was very poignant for me because, of course, I was excited about going to high school. But junior high made a profound difference in my life. And I might say also that that was the time that my Salvation Army officers, and just to explain the connection to the Salvation Army in my life, it was our it was our church. Some people don't realize that in addition to being a philanthropic organization and a charitable organization, they're primary, primarily their church. And every other thing that they do is an offshoot of their compassion for people, marginalized people and people that are maybe um, not, they're in need of something, whether it's socialization or um, finances or food. So my family had been involved in the Salvation Army. My Aunt Frances, one of my mother's sisters, died as a missionary in the Salvation Army. When we lived with my Aunt Dolores, we wa walked to the Salvation Army Church in Modesto every Sunday. I mean, it was just what we did. Um, I had begun attending the Salvation Army Sunday School. My brothers weren't that interested. But once I figured out that was another place that I could get to on my own by walking, the little church was somewhere again in this neighborhood. But I, can't, I couldn't tell you now. It was a little corrugated steel building, cold in the winter, because I'm sure there was a heater in there. But I mean, the wind came in around all the corners. But when I was 12 years old, the Salvation Army officers that were assigned to Salinas were Captain and Mrs. Carl Irby, Carl and Hazel Irby. And they came and found me and they, you know, they called on my mom and said, if, if we want to invite you to church. Well, nobody else was interested. And so no matter where I lived at the time, they would come and pick me up in their station wagon and I got to go to church with them. And they became, Mary Jean, they became my, my surrogate parents. You know, there was nothing going on at home it, that was nurturing. And so between the home I found at El Cicel 
junior high school and then the home I found with Captain and Mrs. Irby um, my mom wouldn't let us go much of any place but she never defied God if we were going to church that was okay church in the library <laughs>